Okay, welcome to the new series that we're doing on sculpture. So this is a series we're going to be doing over the next couple weeks. I imagine it'll be a similar length to what we did with the Alchemy series that just ended. There were seven live streams we did on that topic. And um, each one probably between 40 and 60 minutes. So quite a bit of information there. If you're interested in, in alchemy, make sure you check out that series. If you're interested in sculpture, then you're in the right place. And today we're going to be talking about a few different pieces of this uh, in terms of the foundation. Uh, it's like a, a chance to maybe look at exactly what this instrument is. Uh, and then we'll, in subsequent videos, look at other things like the effects that are on it, all of the modulation tools, uh, the LFOs, the envelopes, the morph pad. Uh, we'll look at this tool in the context of other uses, such as uh, the side chaining ability and the effects we can do that are similar to vocoding, but not exact. Uh, they're not vocoding, but it's similar. And so we'll look at a lot of different things over the next couple of weeks. And, um, you know, I'm expecting that we'll finish this series even if we only have a, a few hundred people watching these videos. I think it's a good resource for future users and, and so forth. But um, at any point along this, for those of you who are watching, and I'll remind you as we go, because there's only a few of you here so far, uh, make sure that you're putting comments in the chat. Uh, or questions, uh, we can go on any kind of, um, you know, we can take a, a little stroll away from the main topic at any time that we want. I think that's fine. Um, that's the benefit of coming in for a live stream is, is being able to interact a little bit. So, first and foremost, let's talk just about uh, what sculpture is, uh, how it works a little bit. We'll look at uh, some of its primary features and um, a little bit about, you know, the thought process behind an instrument like this. The one thing I am going to do right off the bat is put the render mode, which is down in the extended parameters here, into high definition. It's like I've got the power. The default is basic um, and uh, I like to be able to use the, the high definition. So you may be using yours and thinking, wow, that default patch doesn't quite sound the same as mine. And part of that is because of that. So let me just real quick, uh, at the same time, you should tell me if you can hear this. Bitterman, let me know if you can hear that, okay. It just sounds ever so slightly better. In most cases, uh, it just is subtle, but in some cases, it's quite a bit. Okay, cool. So I, I see that it's working. This is a modeled instrument. It means it's, uh, it's like creating a bunch of parameters. And with those parameters, uh, we get to create this instrument. Uh, just the same as you would with like a, a violin. The parameters on a violin are, include things like it's made out of wood. It has certain types of strings. You bow it uh, across the bow or you can pluck it uh, with your finger. Um, you tune them a certain way. All of those things are parameters. Uh, the same way we have parameters here inside Sculpture. And it actually works uh, well as an analogy because we are using a string here as well. You can see this little green line over on the side. <laughs> You can actually disable that if you don't want to. It used to be off by default, I, I believe, and then you'd have to turn it on, partially because you know we like to uh, always push what our computers can do. Now the string animation isn't such a big deal in, in the context of modern computing, so it's on by default. That string uh, is made out of, programming-wise, this material section in the middle of the, the whole instrument. So this is really the string right here. And so what I want to do is first uh, today look at this material section, uh, explain a little bit about it because I think that that's uh, one of the important things to understand. And then uh, we'll go on from there. But 
we have a, a lot of information in one area. And I keep on thinking, you know, maybe at some point they'll redo this instrument and give it a new in, you know, interface, but it's unlikely that that part will change that much even if they ever did. And I'm not saying they will. They, they might never ever change this. But um, they, they would have a hard time being more efficient, although I believe they could be a little bit more clear because it is not very efficient. Um, so what we have, essentially with the material, vertical is inner loss that talks about the part of the material axis and we have stiffness on the other side. And between the inner loss and the stiffness, uh, we get different, um, different sounds. So essentially left being, uh, means that it's the least stiff. We get steel and nylon, and then with inner loss, um, well, inner loss, we get nylon and wood. So those are the four corners, nylon, wood, steel, and glass. So let me play a little bit. And let's turn off the delay, the body, the filter. We'll turn off everything except for just So not exactly what I would say, uh, you know, like hitting a steel bar or something, but you get the idea that they're steel-like in many ways. Um, and so as we go through these, I think that this becomes really important to understand partially the, the thought process behind this, because there was even something I was, um, I was reading through preparing for this series and there was a concept that I didn't even fully have, uh, you know, in my own brain about this. Um, and so we're going to talk about that. It's not just that the material, but it's also the medium through which the material resonates. And so they're talking like, is the, the material, is it just vibrating in the air or is it vibrating underwater? You know, how dense is the atmosphere that this is in? I mean, so you, you really have to stop thinking or don't think about this as a traditional th synthesizer. Think of it as an instrument that has all these components to it. Um, okay, so the last thing I'll say about that uh, is that it does change, for instance, the harmonic content of this. So for instance, uh, one of the things that we talk about with metal, when we're hitting metal with things, um, so the stiffer the string gets, uh, it's actually less harmonic. So uh, you think of like a, a piece of wood or a string, and you pluck it, it has nice harmonic structure. Well, something that's really dense like metal is um, has a different type of harmonic structure that doesn't line up with the you know, the series of overtones. And so we get a lot of, a lot more inharmonic content, like a bell. Uh, and so that's actually part of this as well. They programmed this to act like that in many ways. And then we get more harmonic. Okay. So all of that we think about. Now let's just break down some of the other pieces around this. One of the most important things is uh, to keep in mind that a lot of the adjustments we make refer to what happens in middle C, C3 on your keyboard. And so if we change the resolution, they're talking about the max number of harmonics possible at C3. And anytime you go above or below that, it's, uh, it's going to change and, and be different. But we're, we're looking at in the case of of each of these things at C3. Same with tension mod, media loss, etc. All of those are a C3 reference point. Um, but let's talk exactly about what some of those things do. So for instance, you'll hear as you go to the lowest resolution that it's much more like a pure tone rather than uh, something that has a lot of character over time.
And there's a reason we want sometimes in the middle. We don't necessarily want something that just all the time has that highest uh, resolution, but. So that's the resolution. Talks about the harmonic complexity. Um, then we have media loss. And this is the one that, that they are always talking about. You know, are we underground, in the water, in the air? Um, a little bit of that. It also has to do with uh, the actual string itself. How long is it going to vibrate? Um, you know, what's, what's happening in terms of the density? Does it, uh, is it something that's, that doesn't want to continuously vibrate over time? So that's the media loss. And then tension mod. You can hear a little bit of a pitch bend at the beginning. And that's really useful for certain things like a drum head. You hit like a tom really hard. Uh, just the pressure of that stick on the tom head changes the pitch a little bit because the head is tighter when it's being hit and then it goes you know to its other uh, tuning and so we see we can create things like that in nature as well with a little bit of a, a tension modulation let me check um, some of the comments bitterman says something about the presets there are a lot of presets and there's actually some really good ones i've used quite a bit um, Totigara says sculpture has always been a hidden gem that's not really hidden. Huh? It's just uh, older, so people forget about it. I like it for string bass sounds a lot, though. And then Bitterman says there's a lot of bells and whistles on this bad boy. Yeah, I agree with all of that. Let's continue on here because we're just still getting started with the material, um, which is interesting. Key scale refers to what happens when you go higher or lower. On your uh, on your keyboard and so we have separate uh, controls then as we go in one of those directions so we can actually create um, you know media loss let's do like that All right so let's go lower actually that's not my oh that's just a, a portion of that So it's like um, if any of you have used any of these instruments from Logic, that's like the via or the through on this. So we set our main media loss, and then we can say how much of that do we want the higher part of the key, uh, the key scale to go towards or not, or the lower one. And so we can adjust it, but we're still doing it in reference to the, the primary amount. So again... Right, so then we go up to the higher. And that's not, it's still resonating more than the lower. So we can certainly scale those up a little bit, which is kind of fun. Okay, same goes for resolution, tension mod. Um, we can adjust those a little bit. And then for the release, Well, I don't want to do that yet. Let's go back to here for a second and make sure that's all, yeah. So this just refers to the end of the note. So you play a note, you take your finger off the key, and then there's the release period. And so we can do some interesting things with that, um, but very little. It's mostly just the media loss. You'll see there's nothing here for the actual tension mod or the resolution to be changed. Cool. But we do have, in both of these things, something a little bit interesting, which I think it's overlooked sometimes. Um, you start learning these things, you're like, ooh, media loss, great. Uh, we also have material changes as well. 
So you can see the our little puck in the middle here changes the material. That's brown. And then we can we have a little diamond as well to change this for the actual low and high part of that for the key scale. So once again, we can do some stuff with this. Let's change media loss down. So you see we're changing what, what the sound is like in the different ranges. So we can make this sound more glass-like as we go higher and more nylon-like as we go lower. So the material can be dynamic across the entire keyboard. And then you'll see in the release area, we can't change the, the stiffness. We can just change the overall inner loss um, for that. So that's the release. We don't get to change how stiff you know, how stiff the material is as we um, go into the release phase, but we can certainly change the inner loss as we go through it. That's a lot of stuff. This one circle here is pretty intense. We can hit the hide button and just go back to the normal thing. In fact, let's initialize. Ooh, that's not what I want, but that'll work. Yeah, that's fine. Let's initialize the setting. Turn up the resolution. Okay, cool. Awesome. I love the sound of it. So, the last thing I'll say about this is that um, we can do some pretty cool things with this uh, sound using like MIDI effects or automation. Uh, let me give you an example. Let's do the modulator. And with the modulator, we're going to do learn plugin parameter. And actually, it's not letting me do that. Oh, that's just the stiffness. Okay, cool. Um, so we can actually control it using outside things. In many cases, what I'm doing with this I remember the very first time um, uh, a friend of mine and I hooked up a Wii. It was before the Wii. It was, um, no, it was the Wii controllers, where you could do like the motion detection and we connected those up with that. One of the things you can do relatively easily is um, c connect any kind of external controller to this. Uh, let's click on one of these down here in the smart controls. I'm going to say I want this to be sculpture. You can see all the different parameters here that we have ability to do with this. And I want to see if there are any of these. So the string and we have all of those parameters we just looked at right here. Um, so we can actually go through with that. Uh, we'll look at this again in one of the more advanced uh, videos, but um, the, we can attach anything we want to one of these knobs in the smart controls and then do any sort of external controller to the smart controls. And so you can control a lot of this using uh, external things. I don't want to get too far into that right this minute, but um, it's really amazing some of the sounds we can do with that. Okay, just to put a bug in your ear. Okay, so let's look then at the next piece of the string, which are the objects. And uh, we're going to start this here, and I want to look at the body EQ. But those are the, the two other main things I want to do in this first introductory video to this. Um, we have three objects right here on the left side. Object one, and let me see if I have... Yeah, there we go. 
So you can see this a little closer. Um, with these three objects, they all correspond to one of these pickups that are down here on the string itself. So that's a similar, well, the objects are the, the numbers, and then the pickups are these letters right here. So the closest analogy we have to that, it would be like a guitar where you're picking, you know, at a place, and then here's like, your, you know, your humbuckers or whatever, your guitar uh, pickups, you can move those into two different places. Um, so that's what this whole thing is down here. You actually get to choose where the objects are activating against the string, just like that. Uh, and so we have those three objects. Now with the objects, and I think I want to do, see if I can zoom out just a little bit here. There we go. There we go. Okay, so with these three objects, um, we have this knob that's in the middle, overall strength. Uh, we have the ability for variation uh, in the plus and minus. We have a, tim uh, a timbre slider and then a velocity sensi sensitivity slider. So I know Bitterman, you were just saying how very sensitive to velocity. Well, you can easily adjust this down if you want. Um, so you can make it less velocity sensitive right there. And then the overall strength of it. So this will all make more sense in a minute when I do some examples. But um, of these three, and I'm gonna go back over to the main interface. One, two, and three. You can turn them on or off. And uh, when they go on, you'll see different various things out here. But the little drop down menu next to these, let's turn them on you'll see are different lengths. They don't have all of the same things. Now, object one has a group of these that um, really are activating against the string. Now, it's really hard to know exactly what they're, what to say, because sometimes we're like, you know, you're gonna strike the string or you're gonna gravity strike, which is kind of like, not exactly dropping something on it, but similar. We're gonna pick it or bow it we're going to use noise to activate the string or blow against it. So that'd be like a flute kind of experience with the blow. The noise, the closest thing I can think of is like, you know, imagine in your head putting a speaker blaring out noise next to a guitar and it's like making the strings vibrate just because there's some volume there. It's similar to that, but not really. And number two, we have all of those ones, plus we have these things. Uh, disturb, bouncing, bound, mass, dampening, external. And then on three, we just have these ones. And so essentially, three and the second half of two are things that we're attaching to the string, like adding a mass to it or dampening it. Um, and technically the external, which we're gonna do like a, a bigger part of a later video with the external because that's the side chain that lets us use it similar but not exactly like a, a vocoder type setup super cool so we get all these three and um, we can move them around and create different sounds with them uh, let me just do a couple of these ones the, here's the impulse strike gravity strike pick. I mean, that's like a guitar pick for sure. Bow. Let me go up an octave. Bow wide. That just means a longer motion before, you know, recycles noise. And then blow. Let's turn down the strings for a second. I love the blow. Okay, so let's look at some of these other parameters then here for a minute because um, they do make a difference with all of these. 
and I think it's important to understand them a little bit because uh, I think that it makes a difference when, with how the, the sound ends up being here. So for instance, strength knob. Because there's three of these objects that are in play, you want to be able to balance what's happening with them. Um, so you're really setting the intensity of the excitation disturbance, that's what the manual calls it, um, and a, a value of zero disables that, and then 100% means that it's 100% in play. So you can do a fade in between those. Um, and when we get to the morph table, you'll see that these can be morphed. So these are some of the morphable uh, objects. Um, the timbre slider, that's this one that's on the left, and it has a zero as a starting point with a plus and a minus on either side. This is uh, adjusting the tonal color of it. So it's not quite like an equalizer, um, but it, is, it adjusts the overall tonality of it. You can make it brighter, more mellow, um, and so let me play a little bit of that. And the, the default doesn't really, I mean, it sounds, it still has sound even at zero, it's just not brighter or mellower. Okay, so the variation slider on the other side, um, that uh, essentially behavior varies between object types. Um, and so it's going to be a little bit different depending on which one you're using. And I, I mean, I love, it's like everyone's a little different with these, so you're going to hear different things, but I love the ability to do... There's probably some place in the manual where it describes them all, but I don't know. And then the velocity sense uh, uh, sensitivity slider just means that um, you're going to have a little bit different uh, response in terms of the velocity. Okay, the last thing in this little object area is the gate. That means what happens to trigger this object and this becomes important with some of the other ones more than like these basics but gate key on is when you push the key always means it's always going to happen and then you can't tell this but the key off my fingers on the key i take it off and it triggers it this is super cool for something with a disturb, like a bouncing effect. It is key off right there by default. So I'm gonna push the key, plays the note, I let go, and in the release phase, it does a little bit of bouncing. Okay, let's talk about one other thing with uh, the string. And this is perhaps one of the most, for me, one of my most favorite things about this entire instrument. And that is the objects, as you trigger them by pushing keys, they, uh, the new notes, the new trigger, all of that interacts with the existing ones. Most of the time with uh, synthesizers, what happens is you play another note and it, you know, re-triggers or, you know, it gets overlapped and nothing happens. But you play one note here, and you play another one, and those two mathematically are being, they're interacting. So all of those things, it creates the most organic, natural sounding instruments that uh, I've ever heard from a piece of software. 
Um, it's just so magical how that works. With the last part of this before we move on, um, you'll see our pickups here. And um, one of the things about the pickups, I mean, I'm trying to see where this is. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, we can use the pickup for various things, but I want to show you a little bit of how these things interact with each other. Let's turn off number two. So if you're listening on headphones, there's a part of this which is uh, stereo image related, and there's also a part of this which is actually, you know, sound related. So you get a lot of variation just even moving these around. And we engage the others. Let's do number three. In a case like this with the bouncing, if I really want that, I'm going to put the bouncing on the third one with the key off and use the second one for something else. So I have the pick already happening and then maybe like a bow. And let's put that on to key on. Putting the bow on the left side of pickup B. Oh, just like the possibilities become so intense when you consider all of that right there combined with we haven't even necessarily thought about which materials okay so let's move on and talk about the last part of what we want to cover today, which is the body EQ. Essentially, we have a string, right? We have the material that that's made out of, the material that's in the atmosphere around it. Uh, we have our three objects which are interacting with the string, the two pickups that are happening with that, all of the parameters to control when they get triggered, you know, what happens with them, uh, how strong they are, what kind of velocity sensitivity we're looking at, all of this stuff happens. And then we get to attach the string to the body of an instrument. And that's this right down here. So we have this low, mid, high, but then we also have all of these uh, essentially ir bodies of instruments. They, they're talking about them as impulse responses. Let's load up a preset though. Um, so that way we can actually look at this in, in perhaps a way that's a little bit different. 
Um, let's see, I want to do nylon fingered guitar. Right, so yeah, you can debate if it sounds like great or not. <clears throat> Excuse me, let's load on the scripter so I can actually have a little bit of a guitar type sound with this. I will do, let's see, guitar strummer. I'll stick with the strum for now. Okay, so we have a little strum happening just so it sounds a little bit more like a guitar. And then I want to go through some of these bodies. the differences. Let's do the next one. Some of those get really thick, but... We can change the intensity, we can shift them, and we can stretch them as well. Okay, so you get the idea. I stopped at cello one, but there's other flutes and things. So for instance, it could be that we're like, you know what, let's do... wood turn off the delay Ooh, those are really that's interesting sounding let me come back initialize the setting turn off Scripture for a second. Go to let's do blow because flute. So we start to think about this as, as we want to create instruments. When we're done with all the other parts, we can attach it to a body. You know, sometimes it'll be a body we think matches like the flute to a flute sound, but sometimes you'll be like, you know what? I really like this a little bit differently someplace else. Um, you can adjust the intensity. We can also, I think, you know, that's, that's for that up there. But we have all of, no, this is definitely for this. Fine structure, we can actually go super high resolution on it. Very interesting. So really you just have to think which part of this phase am I in in this instrument building? Do I want something flute-like? Do I want something guitar-like? Do I want something, you know, percussion-like? And so I think that there's a lot of really interesting parts of that. Yes, Bitterman, it does. I had some flashbacks as well. There's something else happening right this moment. I need my, my keyboard out here, but... Um, so then we end up with all of this stuff. Let's just pick like one of these from each of... Does it 
it sound like a real double bass? Not exactly. It sounds more like an electric double bass. But warm electric, let's see, wood pick bass. I mean, some of those bass sounds are amazing. Let's do, well, I'm not as worried about the pads, but let's just pick one that might look interesting. So, sounds that don't sound like any instrument. Um, let's do, trying to see one of each of these. Let's do a clap. Ah, you know, okay, cool. So a bunch of like electronic or modeled keyboards, the curly whirly. That's definitely like a Stevie Wonder kind of sound. Oh, that one's awesome. I'm playing my uh, typing keyboard, so I'm not going to get a lot of really musical things there, but bells. Okay, let's look at some bells. I mean, that sounds just like a glockenspiel in many ways. Um, skin drum. I don't think anyone's going to question that they can do drum sounds in this. I think that's pretty clear. Um, let's do xylophone. And that sounds pretty legit. Um, but let's also do the classic marimba. Cool. Yeah, I mean, definitely in the, in the right ballpark. Let's look at... Um, Mountain flute. It's like hard to believe that the same instrument is creating that sound. Sounds pretty. And then plucked instruments, everything from harp to one of my favorite Telecaster sounds. I mean, this sound, I've done videos about this one in the past. Um, uh, But we just come in here to our stomp boxes, distortion, or even our amp designer. And switch this out to arpeggiator. You can't fool anybody who's a guitar player, but you could certainly come close um, in a mix. I think there some people would would not even think twice. More, oh, we have bowed instruments. I don't think you're going to fool anybody as a cello here, but. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a cello to me, but it's interesting to get the string type sound. Motion sequences, side chains, warp sculptures, and then we'll get to surround sound stuff later. So many, I like the marbles in a glass bowl.
Oh, I like the marble and the glass bowl sound. That's cool. Okay, so that's the, the look. This is our first video. As you can see from the interface, we have a lot more. We haven't talked about the wave shaper or the filter. We haven't talked about the envelope, um, the, the stereo spread, which ties back into the, where the pickups are, um, the limiter, the delay. Uh, we haven't talked about LFO 1, 2, the jitter, the vibrato, the velocity note on random, and the control A and B, the morph pad. Oof, we haven't talked about so much. And then the MIDI controller assignment option. So there's so many things here um, that we're now going to take in the next couple videos and, and break them down and look at how they tie together because... Uh, I think what I want to do in the next few videos is make it more project-based in some ways, where I say, you know what, let's start with a blank slate, let's create a basic sound, and then let's look at how some of these other tools help uh, make this closer to what you want. So that's going to be our goal for the next few of these. Um, I hope this was useful for part one. Uh, we're just past 45 minutes. If there's any questions, this is the right time to ask um, because in, a, in about three or four minutes, if we don't have anything else, I'm going to just, you know, pull the plug and send this one into live stream heaven. Um, Jamal says, has ever Apple ever updated the presets on Sculpture? And yes, they have. Uh, you, I know that because, well, let me think, how do I know that? tutorial there was a place where is it I think they've actually taken it out a little bit so they may have changed it twice um, there was a place at one point that had like uh, all of the old ones in a place and I think they've either removed it in the newer version I should go back and look at one of my older versions of logic and, and verify but I feel like there was a whole menu of stuff that um, was for the old ones. I don't know where. I think they've pulled them out in a different way now. Let me look over here real quick and just see uh, in the library if anything's over there. So sculpture right there. No, looks like they've they've changed it again. So they have changed it just a little bit, um, moving things around uh, back and forth. So um, not much. Uh, most of these, I feel like, I think I've seen most of these at various times. But um, do keep in mind, this is one of the annoying things. You load up a preset, the render mode goes back to basic, and you want to definitely switch that out to high definition again. Although that one doesn't sound good. Something's wrong with the advanced or the high definition render mode on the marbles in a glass bowl. I don't know what that's about. Ooh, there's a new dating online thing. Let's definitely put this guy in time out. Cool. Um, let's see, Bitumen, so there, is there a video on the channel already that goes over Scripture? If not, maybe we can get a series of videos just to show off the presets. Um, not on all of the Scripture ones, but I've definitely showcased it in various videos. Um, I used it on a guitar video that I did a couple years ago that still is probably right now one of my still most regularly viewed videos. It gets a lot of videos every week. Um... It's like called making guitar sound good in Logic or something like that. And Jamal says, Ultra Beat has potential for unique sound design but seems abandoned. No, I don't think it sounds, I don't think it seems abandoned. Um, in the same way that ES2 hasn't had anything new, not every instrument needs new things. 
Um, I don't believe that they do, especially with something like this. Uh, I don't, to redesign the interface is probably not going to happen. Um, but it might, like they did with the sampler from the EXS24 to the sampler. That really needed it though. Sculpture, in my opinion, the biggest problem, of course, is that, ooh, we're looking at like, I mean, I'm going to zoom in for a second. I mean, look at the amount of information in, in this little screen right here. Has the waveform picker, uh, has the curve, the envelope decay versus delay, the rate, um, sync versus free, random. I mean, there's so much information in one little bit of the screen here. That And it's like kind of a bluish gray, right? Bluish, greenish gray? I don't know. It's like a gray with a little blue in it. Um, and then it's like you have the word that's just a slight different color, slight different color. I mean, I know all of you all are like young people, right, who can see everything perfectly. But you get to an age when um, you can't see as much. And so it's, uh, that, that becomes an issue for some of us. It's really hard on a screen to like, you have to like lean in to do this. It's, that's the part that's a problem. Um, and yes, Jamal, the EXS24, however, I remember when the EXS24 first came out, um, I was alive and in, in, in college and at that time it could do things that nobody else could dream of. And so I think the EXS24 was ahead of its time and then sat for a long time, even when it was just sitting um, if you looked at it in context of logic and all of the MIDI effects and uh, the other tools, the sample editor that was in there, it, it held up its own for a very long time. Um, and then the new sampler, I think in my own opinion, is one of the best samplers that's out there in the, in the context of logic. Nobody else as a software platform does sampling quite as easily, nicely, and efficiently, and powerfully as Logic does right now. Nobody. I mean, you say, well, you know, Contact has scripting. Well, Logic has scripting. Go suck it, Native Instruments. Unless you're watching this, then, you know, you guys are awesome. Um, let's see. Bitterman says, sometimes the limitations of synths are the best parts about them. If all synths could do everything, people would just stick with one synth forever. Um, yes and no. Um, if I was told you can only have two instruments and that's it, um, or even if I was told I could have one instrument, sculpture ah, would be probably number one because it can do bass sounds pad sounds string sounds guitar sounds everything um, then alchemy would be the next one for me uh, because alchemy does everything else there's nothing that alchemy can't do except for string modeled synthesis like this and if i only you know ooh, there's a I should show you this real quick because um, it may be interesting for some of you while we're talking about this, but let's see. AU Instruments, Reason Studios, Reason Rack. So I use Reason Rack. I don't use it all the time in all of my stuff, but I love Reason. Um, I use Reason for like a year before I use Logic. Um, on the regular basis. I had used Logic before Reason, I think, overall, but they have um, a few different really cool things in here. One that I haven't used all that much, but I'm going to find it real quick. Um, let's see. Modeled strings. So this is... Um, the concept I love.
Because again, they break down a violin, for instance, and they recreate it using parameters. Um, and I love that. I love when people take that approach. It's such a nerdy, really amazing approach. Does that sound like a real cello? No, but it kind of does at the same time. Um, it gets closer than sculpture, but I love having more than one tool in my toolkit, and this is another one that I really, really like. Anyway. Um, Bitterman says, can you put your own samples into sculpture? No. Um, however, when we get, when we talk about sculpture in one of the future videos, I'll give you a, like a two second um, advanced thing about it right here. We're going to use the external thing here. So I'm playing my notes right now. Let me see. So I'm playing notes and you're not hearing anything because I have the object number two set to external, which is not much right now, but I'm going to set the side chain to instrument. SoCal, the drums. Okay, so key on or always even. Oh, I may have to do this later because I have that muted. But I don't want to unmute it either. Oh, I see why. Because SoCal doesn't start playing till right here. So that's a preview to when we talk about side chaining into sculpture. That sound you're hearing is the drums attaching to the string and creating that sound of the drums. You're not actually hearing the original drum samples. You're just hearing the effects of the drums on the string as one of its objects. <sighs> There's ways to change this and alter it, make it sound even cooler, but that's pretty awesome. I love that we can do that. You can attach anything to sculpture as an object, even if it's not loading in uh, them as an actual sample. Oh, studio strings. I've done some videos on those before. They're conceptually really great, but they don't sound anything like uh, what you would need for an actual session. Uh, and yes, Bitterman, that is what I was uh, talking about, being similar to a vocoder in a way. I think it's time, unless there's any other questions, it may be time to, to pull the plug on this. Okay. I'll see you all in the next one. There'll be some videos in between part one and part two, I'm sure. Uh, we're not in any rush to do this uh, particular series, but thanks everybody for being here and for chatting and asking questions. And uh, I'll see you on the next ride. So see you all later.